When I play Dragon's Dogma 2, it's like I'm playing a free-to-play game. I swear to God. Forty-two dollars worth of microtransactions in a single player game in day one. Hello everyone and welcome to my channel. In this video I'll talk about my experience in the 8 hours or so of gameplay, combat, quality of life features, performance and of course the day one paid DLCs. Also I want to say from the start I'm addressing the short colors in all my videos, not the actual developers who just did what they were told, despite feeling they are implementing something that's not right. If by any chance you stumble upon this no, I feel you and I'm sorry. I know how you feel at this point. I might have bad takes in this, but that might be because the devs didn't make things intuitive, so yeah, sue me. Now, with this out of the way, let's get into business. This could be a very good game, but come on guys, it's so annoying. So let me tell you what triggered this video, because I usually make a review after I 100% a game or I'm very close. It was not the microtransactions or the inconvenient single player features. It was the fact that I lost all the progress because of the great one save feature this game has. Well, actually it has two saves. I have no footage of uh, this story because it was early Saturday morning and I just fired up the game. But I entered the brothel in the capital city. I heard some guard mumbling some shit but I ignored him. Then he immediately stabbed me. I tried to exit the establishment, which I did, but he followed. I, I just had to kill him, right? Then a ton of guards that hit like a truck spawned out of nowhere and proceeded to kill my party. I was left with one HP or something and I got tied up and thrown into jail. It was obvious I needed to hit the wall in there, so I ended up in some sort of sewers slash tunnels. I found my way out of them and my gear magically uh, starting popping up in my inventory. I equipped my stuff, but then I was alone. All my pawns were gone. As I don't want to read shit online when I play a game like this, because I want to see how easy to understand this for people to do stuff in the game, for reviewing purposes of course, I so I haven't looked for a solution online. So I decided f it, I'll save scam, right? <laughs> I ended up in my cell again because the game automatically saved over my manual save. Jesus Christ, guys. Really? What the actual f man? Okay. Then, <laughs> in a brain fart moment, I clicked reload from my last in. <laughs> Doing so, I loaded at the only moment I used an in in this game <laughs> because it was free, of course. Otherwise, it costs a lot of gold, for me at least. And that, moment, <laughs> and that moment in time was right after the prologue. In the first village you end up. Yeah. And before I could panic exit the game, I saw the stupid auto-serve <laughs> auto circle. <laughs> so that now became an actual save. How stupid is that, guys? Really. So to actually have two saves in this game, you constantly need to sleep at inns and pay 2000 gold each time. Good god. I know it's not that much, but I would rather sp spend that gold gearing my pawn and myself and I'm always start for gold. There are a lot of cool items I want to buy from the shops. So for a game this unpredictable, and I don't say it in a bad way, I think it's good for a game to be unpredictable, but in this it's idiotic to not have unlimited saves. I don't care whatever your reasoning is, I really don't. So the above story, despite being fun, made my experience turn to shit in 5 minutes and deleted over 6 hours of progress, almost 7 hours actually. This is why I will review this game at this moment in time. So, be warned, I review a game after only 7 hours of game time. Capcom went out of their way to make our experience miserable, only to squeeze some more dollars out of us. So, sure bro, for that I will, for the first time, I believe, thumb a game down on this channel. It's the only game in the recent mem memory I wish I could refund, but I can't, obviously. 
anyway i will not follow my usual review template for this i will just talk about stuff i like and dislike and give scores at the end and i will start with the bad only to show people i care about them and don't want to waste their time unlike capcom this game ui is terrible i mean even for a console port opening the map in the capital city is almost pointless it is hard to navigate that city for no reason okay i get it you wanted to have uh, less hand hold the experience but my god having to press three keys to open the damn map guys guys hello i play all kinds of hard games and i have almost no issues with them what i have issues with are dumb decisions like this it shouldn't be a f chore to open the map if you have it in the game and you don't even see yourself on it most of the time because it's the same color as any other shit besides the quest markers i'm genuinely amazed you chaps did those yellow quest markers to be honest if you would stay consistent you'd make them invisible or something and besides the map the inventory is dog shit i mean for once i hate when games show you equipped gear in the inventory it has an icon that shows you the item is equipped of course but still I would prefer having them gone from my inventory if I equip them. Yeah, you'd have to squeeze a character with equipment slots in there then, but I don't care. I hate games that don't have that. So the UI looks cool for the most part, but it's not practical. If I play a PC game, I expect you to deliver a game that doesn't scream console port all over it. The controls are pretty bad, the sensitivity feels off. Playing an archer feels bad, especially if you have more than one melee pawn in your party. The stamina in this game feels terrible, I shit you not. When you run out of it, your character almost stops moving. I get why they did it, but it feels like shit. You can achieve the same results without making the combat experience like this. I'm pretty sure of it. I didn't figure out a way to quick accessing my potions and stuff and that somehow always make my food and potions useless as I don't want to open the stupid inventory to drink in the middle of combat for I imagine reasons of course. So all the food I collect I eat and drink rarely especially after I got a health dispenser in the party. I mean mage pawn. Oh and uh, for some reason my health maximum drops every time I take damage only to force me to sleep. So after a few combat sessions you really need to make a camp or go back to an inn to rest. So you don't do long expeditions into the wild. I pushed this to the limit at some point and my guys were having half the maximum hit points. Another stupid feature I don't really understand. So when I play Dragon's Dogma 2 is like I'm playing a free to play game. I swear to god there are a lot of features that are wasting time for no reason making the game feel inconvenient. Want to know what else is inconvenient in the game? <laughs> <laughs> having 42 dollars worth of microtransactions in a single player game in day one and i bet they missed a few cool quality of life dlcs like saving slots for example i don't know i'm just saying whatever jokes aside this is a disgrace as i said on the steam forums at some point these guys deserve their negative reviews for this thing alone i don't care that is a good game under all this festering sh so yeah, microtransactions. Nothing else to say really, I hear all can be obtained in the game anyway, but remember, is the principle. I saw people comparing this to Helldivers 2. This game doesn't hold a candle to Helldivers 2. That's a live service, that's a co-op multiplayer game, and it costs almost half of this game. If you still don't get it, I don't know what else to say. I never feel pushed into that game to buy their sh and I was getting premium currency from the start at a reasonable pace. Whatever. Ah, and besides, that's a grinding game, right? It's all organic in Helldivers. In this, feels forced. Who thinks my take on this issue is a big L? I don't know. Tell me in the comments, please. I'm open for a debate, especially if it's civil. I will list here some of the other bad things about the game, or let me put it this way what I consider being bad. I didn't find a way to split a stack of potions or food to give my pawns and the way to tell them at what HP threshold they should start chugging them. General lack of intuitive game mechanics. The fact that I have to read all that stuff doesn't bother me that much but devs should always try to convey information in a good way and <laughs> this is not it. That's everything assembled. 
A job well done, if I do say so myself. Oi! Did you need something? All characters have this English accent, and f for me, that is really annoying. It's like I'm talking with, I don't know, football hooligans or something. And this is perhaps not my, not as annoying as my Eastern European accent uh, is to you, but still, a small negative for me, personally. The contrast in the game is pretty bad, I mean, I can't come up with good settings for the life of me. The skybox and light sources should be brighter, the dark areas are okay though, so yeah. Performance, on this topping I can tell you the game runs ok on my PC, but I have these specs, so it's better f***ing run ok on it. The thing is, 60 FPS on one of the best PCs consumers can buy is dog poop. And I'm sorry, sure, I did crank everything up like a maniac and I didn't even enable DLSS, but I don't like that shit. I got a good video card so I can brute force games. I guess you can squeeze more performance out of your game by turning that on and turning off ray tracing and some other demanding features. I don't care, I expect the game to just run well with everything on. And for me, 60 FPS is more than enough, because I got a shitty 2K monitor that only has 60 Hz anyway. But still, if I turn versing off, I expect at least 100 FPS. I'm special like that, I know. Graphics don't reflect this performance, because this is another thing that gets to me. If a game looks gorgeous, sure, I'll be glad with even 60 FPS. But Capcom, when you slap that green color correction over your game, making it look bleak and uninteresting, yeah, whatever. Now let me go over what I like. The combat overall feels good, until you run out of stamina that is. Decent hitboxes and gory impacts, I can only talk about how it feels playing with a bow, as I couldn't try anything else. I mean I know you can change the vocations at certain NPCs but I didn't have time to test any of them other than the initial one I chose. It felt good to hit the eye of the cyclops or pin harpies to the ground. But when fighting goblins my warrior always gets in my way and it feels terrible to shot his back. So having to flank only for a little sh** that dies in two hits it feels bad man, I don't know. Oops, I said I'll talk about what I like now. I, I'm I'm sorry, I'm I'm sorry guys. Uh, I like the vocations, weapon skills, core skills and augments. It seems you can have varied builds making each pawn unique and helpful in its own way. The story seems decent with <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm so sorry guys. With two exceptions, you are a silent protagonist, I know a lot of people find this stupid, but I always enjoy games that give your character a voice. And the second thing is the fact that you are the f chosen one. Oh my god, I'm sorry guys. I got to a point in my gaming life when I absolutely hate stories that place my character in the center. I'm sick of them. It all started when I, when I played Diablo 3 for the first time and I got tired of hearing the word Nephalem all the time. Besides, this fast world would be perfect for an average nobody to explore. But no, I'm the special snowflake, the ruler of the land, whatever the f I need to get my crown back from the evil queen, yada yada. Don't worry, this is early into the game, so I didn't spoil anything really. So, despite the game having some good parts, and even great parts, I can't recommend this to anyone. There are too many annoying things in it. I might finish it if I get over the fact that Capcom ate 6 hours of my progress, because they are too lazy to implement goddamn normal saves into their game like a normal developer would in a single player f game, then there are the microtransactions that have no place in this, then there is the performance, then there's the UI, then there are the design choices and all the bad bits I talked about. As I said, I like hard games and I understand devs not having the time or resources to implement good tutorials, but these guys put a lot of work hours into some of the bad features of this game and I don't understand why, it's like devs didn't play their own game really. If I'd rate this game, I'd give it a 5 out of 10. 
and I'm being generous. So yeah, be warned, if you buy this after watching my review, be prepared for a rough ride. As you kind of forfeit the right to complain in my eyes at least. Uh, and these are only the things I noticed in my 7 hour playthrough. God knows what you will encounter later. The TLDR of the TLDR is, I feel like I need to fight the game too much to do basic shit like navigation or inventory management, microtransactions into a single player game, stamina, zero quality of life features. And I don't see this game being fixable with a patch or two. It needs a lot of time and work. So this Despite being an advocate for patience and understanding, I know this game is beyond saving in the short to medium term. I wish devs would give a damn when they release this half-cooked game in, on 10 different platforms. Console UI for a PC game is a very bad sign. This is why I tell people if a game has connection problems, that's the best bad thing that could happen. And I didn't even mention the nouveau because I have no single informed opinion about it. I only know that people hate it and I'm pretty sure not because they want to pirate the game. And I also didn't mention people having constant crashes from the character theater to in-game cinematics or abysmal performance. I only talked about my own experience with the game, so do more digging, but I can safely tell you to pass this for now. To watch the taste of this to watch the taste of shit this game has left, I might play some driving sims for a week or two because I feel I haven't played one of those in years. For more reviews like this, game guides, playthroughs, show me some love and if you dislike my takes, tell me why. I'm genuinely curious. Thank you for watching and until next time, take care and see ya.